Hello, and welcome to The Mobile Sanctuary. My name is Pastor Phil Diaz, and this is Church Anywhere. And so we're grateful that you've decided to join us tonight, wherever you are. And so as we gather here tonight in this virtual space, I want us to be um, encouraged uh, for each of us just to simply take a moment and engage with each other, engage with our virtual community online here tonight. So please take a moment post a comment in the chat with your name and where you're watching from. It's always a blessing to be able to see how far reaching our church community really is. In addition, if you could also please take some time to hit that share button and please invite someone to the mobile sanctuary here tonight. This small act can make a big difference and it can help others uh, join with us in the mobile sanctuary where we can come together and find peace, strength, and how we can also learn more about the Lord. And so tonight, make sure you hit that share button. Let us know how we can uh, be of best of help with you with that. Also, we would love to be able to pray for you wherever you are at. And so please drop your prayer request in the chat. Our community is here to support each other. So please don't hesitate. Please drop those prayer requests in the comments. Um, All of your needs and your faith, uh, it matters to us very deeply. And so we want to be able to be good stewards of that. And we want to be able to lift you up in prayer and encourage you here tonight. So tonight we're going to be talking about an exciting journey many of us may be familiar with, maybe either personally or maybe through uh, living through someone else's experience of someone that we know or that we love or that we're friends with. And tonight we're going to be talking about the journey of letting go of addictions. We're going to be letting go of addictions. And so it's a topic that touches, I know, on many lives, many families, many communities, and often with it, it brings many challenges and a lot of pain and and just a lot of just deep circumstances. But here tonight, we're going to be hoping and praying for your renewal and for your healing in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that addictions can come in many forms, and they can grasp and really take a hold and strangle our lives, and they can affect our relationships, our health, and our spiritual well-being. And it's a battle that oftentimes it makes you feel lonely. But I'm here to assure you tonight that you are not alone. So please, tonight, as we explore what it means to look at these challenges head on, let's embrace the power of faith and the community in overcoming these things and towards looking towards a path of freedom and healing. Because this is not about judgment. I want you to understand this is not about pointing fingers. This is not about putting anyone on blast. What tonight is all about is understanding and supporting and finding strength in the Lord and with each other here tonight. All right, well, let's take a moment and let's dive into our main scripture that's going to help lead the way to illuminate our path towards being closer with the Lord and understanding more of his word in this topic of letting go of addictions. So tonight we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. Well, this scripture is perhaps less frequently cited in discussions about addiction. But I truly believe that it is offering us a powerful reminder of God's presence in our struggles with temptation and also with addiction. It acknowledges the universality of temptation, reassuring us that we are not facing anything unique or insurmountable. This verse speaks directly to the heart of anyone that is battling addiction by affirming God's faithfulness. Tonight, if you are battling addiction, just type in the chat and just say, I'm battling, I'm battling. And sometimes these addictions are not just all of the the dark and dreary things that we make them out to be. Addictions come in the form of overeating or maybe overspending, okay? Some addictions, of course, are drug and alcohol related. Addictions can come in all sorts of different things. It could be in a relationship with someone that you know you shouldn't even be involved with. And so addictions can come in all sorts of different ways. But tonight, I want to look at the promises 
of this. The promise is that God will not allow us to be overwhelmed by our temptations, but will provide the strength and means to overcome them. And I truly believe, church, that this assurance is vital in the journey toward breaking free from addictions. All right. So type in the chat. Say, I want to break free. I want to break free. Type that in the chat. And so as we are learning how to break free from addictions, I believe that this word also offers us hope and it offers us a tangible reminder of God's provision for our escape. And so within the light of all of the context of this, please realize that this scripture is encouraging us to look for and recognize all of the different ways that God can provide a way out. I mean, how many of you just want a way out of the things that you're battling here tonight? Amen. All right. Well, this is a verse to help encourage you with that. And this verse is helping us to learn how to learn how to basically let go and to let God. Amen. It helps us to uh, basically come to a point in our lives where we can learn that ultimately we can overcome the trials that we face through the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so here's our kickoff question for the night. Just to get us started, I would love to hear from you in the comments, so please drop a comment in the chat, all right? So, have you ever found yourself in the grip of addiction? Have you ever found yourself in the grip of addiction? Like I said, it could be anything like maybe overeating, spending too much, could be even drugs or alcohol. It could be that you found yourself addicted to watching too much television at one point. Type your thoughts, type your comments in the chat. So the first thing that I wanna talk about here tonight and helping us learn about how to let go of addictions is understanding this. And this is our first point. It's learning about the power of acknowledgement. The power of acknowledgement. Type that in the chat. Just say the power of acknowledgement. All right. Type that in the chat. The verse that I want to lead us with uh, tonight, as far as these thoughts go, comes from James chapter five, verse 16. And it says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Oftentimes, we live in a world that tells us to hide our flaws and to mask all of our pain. And the Bible boldly calls us to do the complete opposite. James 5.16 isn't just a suggestion for us. I believe that this is God's strategy for healing and for giving us strength. And it's a call to just be honestly raw with him and be vulnerable. And it's the kind of transparency that I truly believe that will change your life, not just on a personal level, but truly within the entire body of who we are, the body of Christ, even. We will be a changed and transformed human being. So let's face it. There's just times where when admitting our faults is especially difficult, especially confessing any sort of addictions that we may want to carry. And, and it's incredibly hard. It's like standing in a crowded room and then just stripping away all of our defenses. So why would we do something like that? I believe that this kind of acknowledgement forces us to face our deepest fears and our insecurities. Yet it's also in this very act of confrontation that we have to find our first step that we take towards true healing. And I've often said it this way, you can't defeat what you don't define. Amen? I want to say that again. You can't defeat what you don't define. So acknowledgement is about defining the enemy within us and bringing our sins and struggles into the light. And so when we become uh, vulnerable within our being, um, to be able to share something openly like this, sometimes to share our struggles, to share the things of how we hurt or how we've been hurting others with our addictions, how we can just simply be more open with each other. Um, I truly believe it's in these moments then that it can really spark something remarkable. Um, as we begin just to be honest, as we begin to just understand that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Um, we can truly begin to shatter the illusion, I believe, of loneliness and isolation. So many people live in addiction because they stay in loneliness and isolation. But the word of God reminds us that the enemy loves to keep us isolated. I truly believe that. 
However, when we begin to confess our sins to one another and we break the the grip of the enemy within our lives, we begin to join forces with fellow believers who stand ready to bear our burdens with us. And this isn't just about finding just, you know, a simple set of sympathy from somebody. It's truly about unpacking the power of communal prayer and support within our lives. I truly believe that James 5.16 doesn't just highlight the act of confession. I truly believe it underscores the transformative effect of righteous prayer. Type in the chat what you think a righteous prayer is. Take a moment, type a chat in the chat. What is righteous prayer to you? I believe that the prayer of a righteous person is when we get real with God and we confess those sins, we lay it before him, and the Lord then begins to take those burdens from us. And when we share our burdens, we're not just seeking empathy. We are truly learning how to activate the spiritual network of support that is powered by prayer and powered by God. In communal prayer, I truly believe there's incredible strength. Oftentimes, I find myself uh, reignited and and refired up in life when people come and pray for me all together. And so I often speak about this. When I preach, you've often heard me probably say that the church is not a museum for the saints, but it's a hospital for sinners. And in truly in this regard, we have to remember that that the church is the spiritual hospital that we need to find strength together in, the strength to overcome, the strength to come together, the strength to draw lines, the strength to say no more, Satan, the strength to be able to just go to the altar and lay it all before the Lord, the the strength just to be able to do that together as a family of God. When we can do that together, trust me, our prayers are more than just words. This is how the very power of God is working and moving in people's lives. And so, Acknowledging our sins is important. Acknowledging our struggles is important. And then acknowledging these things to one another is extremely important as we take a step towards healing. Because I truly believe that as we do these things, we're going to be taking a leap of faith That is going to be filled with the power of God, his grace and his power and his strength working within our lives, working within the people of God. Oftentimes I've heard it said like this. It's in our acknowledging our weakness that God's strength is made perfect. Amen. And so by confessing to each other, we're not displaying our failures. We're declaring with everything that we have within all of who we are, with all of our faith. We are declaring in a God who heals, in a God who loves in a God who has grace, where there is no sin and shame in him, but where there is true power to heal. And then when we come together as a church and as a community of faith, and we support that, and we support that within our prayers, we support that within our words of encouragement, we support that in, in, in calling each other or in communicating with each other and doing life together, it's an extremely powerful thing. So let us then be courageous. Let us be courageous and let us not lean into being isolated. Remember, you're not alone. Let us lean into understanding that our path to healing comes when we confess the very thing that is strangling us, holding us, when it is breaking us apart. Let us be relentless in prayer for these things because I truly believe it's through our prayers that we can tap into the power of God. And let's Remember, in the kingdom of God, no one, no one, no one fights alone. So let's take a moment and let's group together in the chat and let's discuss this. How can confessing our struggles to others strengthen our journey towards freedom? Type that in the chat. How can confessing our struggles to others strengthen our journey towards freedom? Type in the chat.
Hey everyone, we're back with the second point here tonight. And I truly believe that this second point is going to be a way to help us make this a game changer within our spiritual lives. Tonight, I want to talk about the role of faith in healing. All right. I want to talk about the role of faith in healing. And tonight to lead us into this, I have with us Psalms chapter 147, verse three, and it just simply says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. This is a powerful verse for anyone who is dealing with addictions. I want to read it again. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And so tonight, in whatever pain that you maybe you're feeling from the uh, just the weight of addiction, I want you to know this, that there is truly a deep cut and emotional turmoil within us when we have a strong addiction within our lives. But the promise of Psalm 147.3 shines on us in the darkness as a beacon of hope. It's a divine assurance from God that he's not only aware of our suffering, but is actively involved in our healing process. Amen. How many of you are glad that the Lord is involved in your healing process? Type in the chat, say, I am glad. Type that in the chat. I am glad. And so the Bible often speaks to the power of faith in transforming lives. Emphasizing that, you know, our belief in God's healing isn't just a spiritual talk. It's truly the foundation of our recovery and of our growth. So in order to understand this, I think a little bit better, I just simply want to define faith because I truly believe that faith is not just a passive belief. It's not something that you just say you have. Uh, faith is something I believe we all practice in one way or the other. I often uh, accumulate it. When you go into a room, you have faith that when you hit the light switch, it's going to come on. But even though you know that the light switch should turn on, you're having a little bit of faith to understand that it should. Well, faith is not a passive belief. It is truly, to me, I want to define this, it is an act of trust. And more or less, I want to define that it's an act of trust in God's ability to just do whatever the Lord would have to do. And that could be in healing and restoration. That could be in just doing a miracle within our lives. But I truly believe that faith is an act of trust in God's ability to do whatever he would will to do. And so when we are looking at facing addictions within our lives, the journey towards recovery can often feel lonely and insurmountable. However, faith bridges the gap between our human limitations and also God's limitless power. It acknowledges that while we may not have all the strength to overcome our battles alone, we have a God who is mighty to save. And so tonight, I want to remind all of you of this, that as we need to, we need to acknowledge our need for God. And that is truly where our healing begins. So as we are leaning on God's strength, um, I know for me, that looks like learning how to give all of my burdens and all of my troubles and all of my sorrows over unto the Lord. And leaning on God's strength doesn't mean that we're weak at all. I want you to understand that there are some individuals who do not want to do that because they feel like they will be weak. But trust me, the Bible even says is that when we are most weakest, he is the strongest. And so it means that we need to be wise enough to recognize the source of our true power. Faith allows us to see beyond the immediate struggles, and it connects us with the eternal, unchanging promises of God. And it's in this connection that we find solace, we find strength, and the courage to face each day. And so by embracing faith, we shift from a mindset of isolation to one of hope and one of belonging. And we're reminded that in God's family, healing is not just a wishful thought. It's a real outcome for all who believe. Amen. Type in the chat. Say, I believe. Amen. Type in the chat. I believe. Say, I believe. Type in the chat. This is a real outcome for all of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have to understand that in turning to God in our dark, darkest moments, um, it, it more than just provides comfort. It really opens up the door to us to begin to have that life change within our lives, what we call transformation, what we may even call a, a deepening of salvation and, and sanctification within our lives. And so through faith, we are introduced to the depth of God's love for us, a love that sees beyond our failures and, and our uh, frailties. Uh, oftentimes, this is highlighted in the importance of seeing ourselves as God sees us, not as broken individuals, not as people that are defined by our addictions, 
Aren't you glad for that? First of all, amen. God doesn't define you by your weakest parts, amen. He doesn't define you by the sin that's within your life, but, but he defines us as being beloved children, destined for freedom and fulfillment through his grace, through his love and through his power. And so this divine perspective is not only healing, but it's also extremely liberating because I truly believe that when we get a hold of this idea within our own minds, within our own hearts, within our own entire being, this is the Holy Spirit at work, removing the barricades, removing the desires, removing the things within our lives that make us want to go back to that, that drink, to make us want to go back to doing those drugs, to make us want to go back to, to overeating or to be overspending or to be overdoing things or, or any of those things within our lives. And, and I truly believe that this is the, the, the Lord working within our, our hearts and lives. And so this perspective should give us an idea of how much God loves us. And it should within our hearts and lives, do something to us to make us understand that, that life is not to be lived, to be addicted into the chains of addiction, not to be addicted to the chains of self-doubt and uh, depression and all of these other things, but to live freely in his power. And so I truly believe that the role of faith and healing, it, it's undeniable. And that's a dynamic force that invites God's intervention into our struggles, transforming our pain into purpose, amen, and taking our wounds into wisdom. And I just want you to know that our faith is not in vain. It's anchored in the promise of a God who heals the brokenhearted, who binds up their wounds, and he wants to set the captives free, amen? That's what Jesus came to do for you. And that's what Jesus has done for me. And I'm here to preach this word and to teach this word and to take this word to you here tonight and to let you know that it is through Christ that you will be set free. But that begins when we have faith. So we need to hold on tightly to our faith for in it lies the key to our healing and our our wellness and whole being. And through it, through every step of the journey of the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, may we remember that with faith, all things, all things, all things are possible. Amen. So let's take a moment and let's discuss some of this. So how has your faith influenced your journey towards healing and overcoming challenges? Type that in the chat. How has your faith influenced your journey towards healing and overcoming challenges. Type that in the chat. All right, now as we begin to land on our last point, um, I simply just want to tell you how much I love all of you and how much I truly appreciate all of you. And truly, if you're struggling here tonight, please get a hold of me. I would love to be able to pray, especially for you. But as we begin to land on this last point, um, I just simply want to just talk about how learning how to embrace community is so important for our lives. And so simply, I want to talk about embracing community support embracing community support. And I want to talk to you here tonight where it says in Galatians 6, 2, to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. I truly believe that this is what we're called to do as brothers and sisters in Christ. 
I mean, you know, the world is tough enough and, and the world is marked by, you know, a very selfish, individualistic, isolistic uh, type of viewpoint. And, and so the Bible offers us a countercultural mandate, and that is to bear one another's burdens. You're not going to hear that in a commercial. You're not going to see that on television or on streaming anywhere. Um, but what the Bible brings to us is a completely different model than what the world wants to offer to us. You see, the directive isn't just about offering help. It's about weaving the very fabric of our lives into the lives of other people. It means doing life together. And it means about doing life together. It doesn't matter where you came from or who you are. It just simply says that I'm going to look at the person right across from me and I'm going to love them like Jesus would. It's, it's just that simple. All right. So in understanding that, we have to understand that in overcoming addictions, we oftentimes don't feel like we should be loved. And that's also another reason why we run away so easily to, to whatever addiction that we're facing. And so in learning how to overcome addictions, there's two sides to the coin. We have to learn how to, number one, love ourselves. We need to understand how to also um, love the person across from us. And most importantly, we have to learn how to love God and through the whole process. And so this journey through addiction, it has its highs and lows. It has its victories. It has its setbacks. And it's not meant to ever be walked alone. It's with the embrace, I truly believe, of a community that we can find strength to also let go and to heal and to emerge renewed. And so I just want to take a moment, and if you can't imagine with me, that you're standing on the edge of an abyss, and the weight of addiction is just pulling you down. And you feel the shadows of despair creeping within your heart, within your soul. Now imagine feeling a hand in yours, a steadying presence, and a chorus of voices saying, you're not alone. This, my friends, is what I truly believe can be the power of a faith community within your life. It's a beacon of hope, and it truly helps shine in our worst and darkest moments when we have other people alongside us on the journey, pulling us, pulling us, pulling us, pulling us back from the darkness of where we came from within our addictions. And so, Truly, when we have a loving and supportive community, it can mean the difference between sinking and swimming. Truly be the difference between complete despair and total hope. So tonight, I really want you to understand community support. It's not just a one note melody, but it's a symphony of voices, each bringing its unique tone to the collective harmony. It's within this voice that we can often help find the support that we need. Um, when we struggle with addictions, like I said, it's so easy to feel like we're not loved and to feel like we're all alone and to feel like no one cares. And so then we go back and we do the thing that we know is bringing us down. But for a minute, five minutes, an hour, I don't know, whatever time, it'll give us some sort of feeling of joy and happiness within our lives. And so then, then we go back to being sad, depressed, isolated alone. And then we just get into this rut. And this is where I truly believe having a community really helps break the rut. Having a community in your life can really help provide practical help, um, such as, you know, maybe you need a ride to a meeting. Maybe you just need someone to remind you of your goals. Maybe you just need someone to be there for a, a mental or emotional encouragement and help that can help lift you out. Maybe even when you fail. And then to have that a spiritual accountability in its proper uh, place with truth, grace, and love all present within the conversation, uh, truly that can help lead you and guide you onto a path that can be better for your life. And these relationships are the crucible in which we're refined and strengthened, where our vulnerabilities then become the very place where bonds of understanding and resilience are forged. And so I really want us, as we dig into this here tonight, to learn how to embrace a community that is supportive and engaging um, in this dance of basically giving and receiving. It's a rhythm of, of sharing our burdens and joys. It's in this rhythm of this dance that we are learning how to fulfill the law of Christ, 
uh, loving not in just the word alone, but also within deed and within truth, doing the things that God has called upon our hearts to do, to love other people as he has loved us. Amen. And so when we learn how to support others, we pour out the love that God has poured into us. And when we allow ourselves to receive and acknowledge um, this kind of love, uh, we truly begin to acknowledge our common need for grace and healing. And it's in this reciprocity that the heartbeat of the community and the ebb and flow of love is what sustains us through the journey of recovery. Amen. How many of you have recovered from the things that God has broken you free from? Say amen. Type in the chat. Type in the chat. Say, God has freed me from this. God has freed me from that. Type in the chat. Because it's good for us to know that God is working. And then when we do this as a community, we give praise to him together. And so here tonight, I just simply want us to understand that there is a great burden out there to be a people of God, to bear one another's burdens and a call to love Jesus as, as he has loved us and to see each other through the eyes of grace and to walk together with compassion and commitment. And it's in this sacred space of, of I truly believe, a faith community that we can find the courage to face our deepest, darkest fears and addictions. It's in this place that we can find strength to fight for freedom and have the joy of experiencing God's healing together. And as we embrace the support of being brothers and sisters in Jesus, let us remember that it is in the kingdom of God that no one, no one walks alone. There is no burden that is too big. There is no burden that is too heavy. There is no night that is too dark. So let's take a moment and let's discuss. What role has community played and your personal growth with God on a journey to recovery or on a journey to healing? Type that in the chat. What role has community played in your personal growth or recovery journey? Type that in the chat. So tonight, as we begin to close our discussion on letting go of addictions, I just simply want to remind us of a few things. Remember that the journey towards freedom is both challenging and rewarding. It's a path that is marked by moments of vulnerability, strength, and also profound transformation. Through acknowledging all of our struggles and embracing faith and leaning on our community, we open ourselves to the healing power of God's love. And so tonight, remember, in this journey, let's commit to this. Commit our addictions to the Lord. Commit to his freedom. Let us also understand that we need to step into the fulfillment of the life that God has promised for us. We need to lean on his promises and we need to be strengthened in our faith. And let's also commit to supporting one another, praying fervently and living out our faith with courage and compassion. Truly, I believe that together we can face these challenges that come our way and emerge stronger, healed, and truly free in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, here's some next steps that you can take to engage with this topic a little bit further. If you are struggling with addictions in your life, Trust me, it's important to recognize the courage that it can take to face these challenges. I want you tonight to know that you are not alone in this journey. 
and that there's many steps that you can take to help heal and find the freedom that you need in your life. So if you are facing a major addiction, whether it be drugs or alcohol, maybe you're suffering from depression or maybe even suicidal thoughts, it's crucial to be able to seek the proper medical help alongside the spiritual and communal support that you will need. I truly believe that professional guidance can help offer critical resources and treatment necessary for a holistic recovery process. With that said, here's a few things that I would also recommend in doing as well. Number one, join a support group. Consider joining a support group for those that are struggling with addictions. Um, These groups help provide a safe space for sharing experiences and struggles, offering mutual support and understanding. And the act of just sharing your own story and your own journey can be incredibly healing, not just for you, but also for others who hear your story. Number two, I would recommend engage in personal prayer and meditation. Dedicate time to God every day in prayer and meditation, focusing on the promises of God for healing and freedom. This personal time with God is not just about presenting our requests, but also about listening and allowing his peace to fill our hearts. Number three, consider serving and supporting others. Look for opportunities to serve others who may be facing similar struggles. Now, You may not be ready completely to um, do a one-on-one talk or counseling with someone, but learning how to serve someone else in similar situations can be also incredibly healing. So your understanding, support, and maybe even your testimony can be powerful in the lives of others. So serving not only helps those um, that you support, but also can be a significant step in learning how to use your time to do something else then go back to the addictions. And it can be wonderful in the healing process. It can remind you of the progress that you've made and the hope that lies ahead. Again, please remember that while our faith, prayer, and community support are powerful, they work best also in conjunction with professional medical help for those dealing with major addictions. There's no shame in seeking any of this kind of help. It's extremely necessary, and it's a step towards recovery. And our church community here online, here at the Mobile Sanctuary, is here to help support you in every step of your journey, including encouraging and assisting you in finding the professional help that you need. Let's take some time to pray here tonight before we dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, in your presence, we find grace and mercy that knows no bounds. Today we come before you with humble hearts, recognizing our need for your divine intervention. Lord, we acknowledge our sins and the addictions that can entangle us so easily. And here tonight on the mobile sanctuary, we just simply wanna lay those addictions down at your feet. We confess that at times we have tried to walk this journey alone, relying on our own strength and our own power instead of relying on your strength. Forgive us, Father, and help us to be enveloped in your loving embrace with your arms surrounding us, with your grace holding us steady, and with your love radiating and beaming before us. We lift up all of those here among us tonight who are ensnared by the chains of addictions. May they feel the power of your strength and the nearness of your presence as they walk the path towards healing. Bestow upon them the courage to confront their struggles and the faith to believe in your restorative power and the blessing of a supportive community to accompany them. Let them experience the liberating freedom found in your grace, empowering them to lead lives that radiate your glory. Lord, we also bring before you our collective prayer requests. God, encompassing all of the different requests that are received and sent to us, Father, and those that we pray for daily, Lord. We we pray for the physical, the emotional, the mental and spiritual well-being of so many within our church community and our church family. You know every single need, even before we speak it, and yet you invite us to come to you with our prayers and our petitions. Tonight, we pray for healing where there is illness. We pray for comfort where there is grief. We pray for peace where there is turmoil, and we pray for strength where there is weakness. May your Holy Spirit move among us, touching every heart and every situation with your transformative power. In all things, Lord, may we seek your kingdom first, trusting you that you will provide for our needs. Help us to bear with one another our our burdens, fulfilling the law of Christ, and to love one another as you have loved us. May our lives be a testament to your unending grace and unfailing love. 
We pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here tonight on The Mobile Sanctuary. It's truly been a blessing to share this word and to share this time with you here tonight. Remember, no matter what you're going through, you are not alone. We are here for you. And most importantly, we believe that God is with you as well. May you go forth this week in peace and strength and hope and heart with the Lord here tonight. May God bless all of you, and we will see you next time here on the mobile sanctuary.